Hi, I'm Doug Selene, author of Digital Landscape and Nature Photography for Dummies. In this book, I show you techniques you can use to create compelling photographs of the beauty and nature around you. And now I'd like to share with you some thoughts and inspirations about some of the photographs in the book. This is Tunnel View in Yosemite Valley, one of those iconic vistas that I knew I just had to photograph when I was out in California. My decision was what time of the day to photograph it. To get good light, I needed either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Research had told me that in the morning, the light would be hitting El Capitan, the big peak on the left. So I went early in the morning, and literally at this place, you can get out of your car or the tour bus walk over to the rail and take the picture. Too many people do that and they don't put any thought into what vantage point. So I moved around until all the elements in the frame fell into place and I had a nice pleasing composition. And by the luck of the draw, I also had some beautiful clouds. This image was photographed on Pine Island, Florida. Sunsets are very special, especially when you've got some clouds in the sky. When I composed the image, I placed the sun over on the right side of the frame and had this wonderful reflection of the sun on the almost still water. I crouched down very low and I took several shots and in one of them, I had a bird flying right toward the reflection. When you photograph a sunset, don't put your camera away after the sun goes down. As long as the clouds don't go all the way to the horizon, you'll get some wonderful color on the underside of the clouds 10 or 15 minutes after the sun sets. This pelican was perched on a piling waiting for fishermen to come back in and give him a handout. So I knew I had some time to compose the image. I placed the bird on the right side of the frame and I carefully focused on the bird's eye. When you take a photograph like this, make sure the eye is in focus. Even if the rest of the bird is in focus, but the eye is out of focus, people will think the image is out of focus. Alligators are dangerous animals, so you need to photograph them with a long lens. I photographed this guy with about a 400 millimeter lens when fishermen were throwing fish they didn't want out of their cast nets. I was in continuous drive mode, so when the alligator came up to grab a fish, I pressed the shutter button and grabbed several shots. This one was right at the decisive moment when the gator had his mouth wide open and water was splashing all around him. This bird is a black skimmer. It swoops low on the water with its beak open to feed. I photographed several images of this bird and this one turned out the best. The diagonal wake from the bird leads your eye right to the bird and I've got a perfect reflection of the bird in the water as well and the shutter speed was fast enough to freeze all of the action. I was out photographing wildlife with long telephoto lens when I noticed a colorful dragonfly. Fortunately, the lens would focus close enough to where I was able to fill a good portion of the frame with the dragonfly. The combination of a fast shutter speed and a large aperture froze the dragonfly's wings and blurred the background nicely. Birds in flight are majestic, great subjects for photographers. To photograph a bird in flight, you pan the camera with the bird and snap the shutter at the peak moment. To create an image with star trails, you photograph the scene at night under almost a full moon. You're going to leave the shutter open for a very long time, so you need to mount the camera on a tripod and something else you'll use is a device called an interval meter, which enables you to program the precise amount of time that the shutter remains open for.